Hey, what's up you CISSP wannabes? These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Each and every day I ask you not one, but two questions for you to study, ponder, and think about. And I'm Colin Weaver, let's get right to it. Question number one, this one's a doozy. Uh, the Montreal Protocol, which is an international treaty that was approved back in the 1980s, uh, goes in and uh, creates an agreement to stop using ozone depleting chemicals um, uh, and that includes things for fire suppression. Now, uh, the EPA has a program called SNAP that goes in and approves and disapproves certain materials for use for a variety of different things, which includes uh, fire suppression. Of this big long list right here, um, which of these, and I want you to pick six, which of them are approved by SNAP for fire suppression? Go ahead and click pause, because that's gonna take a bit. Read through the list, decide what the answer is, then click play, and we'll break them down. All right, the EPA Significant New Alternatives Policy, or SNAP program, um, is, is a program within the EPA that goes in and approves or disapproves a variety of different uh, types of materials based upon the industry in which they're used in. Uh, the big one that affects us here is uh, fire suppression, but they also have uh, things to say about the refrigeration and cooling uh, business, uh, things about like adhesives and coatings, um, there's, there's a variety of different topics, and, and there's a link down below that points to the EPA's website on this if you're interested more in it. But our focus right here is on um, how SNAP applies to fire suppression. One of the big areas of SNAP's focus is on ozone depleting substances and on their global warming potential. And basically they're ranked based upon um, how, how damaging to the ozone layer they are and what their global warming potential is. First guy on this giant list is brominated flame retardants or BFRs. Uh, BFRs are fire inhibitors, they're not fire suppressors. Uh, these uh, are materials or chemicals that are typically found integrated in with uh, textiles, you know, clothing and fabric that you might find in furniture, um, as well as in a lot of plastics. And uh, in fact, the motherboard of the computer that you're sitting there looking at this video on um, is, probably has BFRs in it, almost certainly has BFRs in it, because you find them also in, in, uh, in connectors, you find them in uh, cables, in the, you know, the plastic covering that goes around cables. Uh, BFRs are there to basically re reduce the likelihood that these things are going to burn and catch on fire. Next guy up on the list is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is excellent at putting out fires. Uh, the, the real danger, and it is approved by SNAP for doing so, um, it does, however, have a little caveat that says that you have to follow OSHA's regs as far as it relates to fire suppression. And again, if you look down in the links below, I've, I've put a, a link in there that points to what OSHA has to say on the issue. Uh, but carbon dioxide is great at putting out fires. The problem is, is that carbon dioxide and people don't get along real well, so you can't pump mass quantities of carbon dioxide into an environment and expect people to live. So um, that's really where OSHA's focus is on it. Uh, the percentages are actually really small. Okay? The amount of carbon dioxide that's in the air is a very small percentage. And usually uh, the, the OSHA regs get involved when you're talking about concentrations that are gonna be you know, at or above 4%. So it doesn't take a lot of CO2 to start having a really negative effect on us. Next one on the list is approved by SNAP, uh, which is FM200. Um, FM200 is really good at putting out fires. You disperse it into an environment, it puts out common combustibles, it'll put out flammable liquids, um, and uh, it's also safe for humans. Uh, Arrow K, the next one on the list, is approved by SNAP. Um, Arrow K is relatively new on the scene, and uh, some of the key features of Arrow K is that besides being really good at putting out fires, it can be deployed in, in very localized scenarios. Uh, you can put it inside of a cabinet, or it can also be in, just staying inside an entire room. And uh, it doesn't require any piping, it's all controlled electrically. And so uh, that makes it fairly easy to install in environments where you, you know, don't want to go in and do anything to the walls and have to run pipes and stuff like that. Uh, plus, it's also portable. Um, I don't know how often you want to move your fire suppression system, but if that kind of stuff is interesting to you, then Arrow K is something that you should give a, give a look at. All right, next guy on the list is Argonite. Uh, Argonite is approved by SNAP. It's a combination of argon and nitrogen. It's safe for people to breathe, and it's also safe for your electrical equipment. It's non-conductive, so that's another one that is SNAP approved. Okay, next one on the list is FM100. FM100 is a class one ozone depleting substance. It was one of the first uh, chemicals banned in the Montreal Protocol. So that's a negative on SNAP approval there. We don't see FM1 or FM100 being used uh, for anything in the fire suppression world anymore. Next guy on the list is FE13. FE13 is a SNAP approved uh, fire suppression uh, mechanism. 
Um, FE13 is considered to be very safe, uh, very safe for people. Um, it's also something that you can store in places where it's going to get really cold um, and still be usable. And uh, its its toxicity is something that's really tr trumpeted. It's low toxicity, I should just say, is something that's trumpeted as a big positive for it. Uh, so it is also SNAP approved. Next guy on the list is HFC32. Uh, HFC32 is non-ozone depleting, however, HFC32 is actually a refrigerant and it's also flammable. Um, when you combine it together with other chemicals, it's actually one of the key ingredients in uh, R410A, which is used in you know, a lot of modern air conditioners and things like that. So no, it's not approved. And the very last one on the list is Energen. Energen is also SNAP approved. Energen is a combination of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and usually argon although sometimes it can have other inert gases, one of which is Krypton, and come on, Krypton is just a cool name for a molecule, um, but uh, he is also one of the uh, SNAP-approved fire suppression mechanisms that's out there. Okay, here comes question number two. In the biometric authentication business, one of the important criteria involved in the selection of a biometric authentication mechanism is how, how acceptable will it be to your user workforce, um, or, or how much resistance do you anticipate that you'll get from them for, uh, for the implementation of it. So of the list that's over here, which of the following is most likely to be considered really intrusive by your users and therefore um, cause you to be met with the greatest amount of resistance for its implementation? So give them a look, ponder it, click pause if you need to, uh, because as soon as you click play again, uh, we're gonna go ahead and break it down. All right, of the answer choices presented, it's a retina scan that is considered to be the most intrusive and therefore is gonna require you to have to deal with the most resistance from your workforce. Um, you know, they're actually really interesting scans in terms of uh, their overall effectiveness because they're considered to be really good in terms of their accuracy. Um, the problem is, is that you, you have to put your eye up on something and that causes people to think that this, this light beam or laser or whatever is gonna somehow cause them damage to their eye. Uh, there's a really interesting thesis that I linked to down below that somebody went in and evaluated all these different uh, mechanisms for biometric authentication. And one of the interesting notes that you'll find in there if you go look at it is um, of the, I think it was 9,000 people that they um, even asked if they wanted to participate, um, almost a third of them wouldn't, didn't even want to participate or wouldn't participate in going in and doing an actual retina scan because of their concerns about their physical safety um, and using it. So even though it's really effective, um, it's still fairly expensive also to implement, uh, but you're also gonna encounter a lot of resistance to trying to put it in place. And that's more than likely why either A, you don't see it at all in a lot of organizations, or B, it's only used in very specialized circumstances. Okay, that's it for today. First question was on the Montreal Protocol and how EPA's SNAP program um, goes in and approves or disapproves certain kinds of chemicals for use in uh, putting out fires. And the second question dealt with how acceptable uh, certain types of, uh, most specifically, how acceptable uh, retina scans were um, as far as your user workforce. So I hope those questions are useful and helpful for you. If you did, please go ahead and love on that like button. It's down there somewhere. It's either right over here or right over here somewhere. Go ahead and click on it. That would be awesome for me. I'll appreciate it. And also, please, please, please be sure to subscribe so you get these questions every single day. Um, and they'll be right there each and every morning waiting for you as you go in and prepare for your CISSP exam. So I will see you tomorrow.